and there's no, when they say resurrection, whenever I've talked about in the first century resurrection, I was talking about the resurrection of the soul. I was talking about new birth. But in terms of resurrection, in terms of me being resurrected, you know, the truth is that the instant you pass, you will have a disconnection of the cord that connects you from your physical body and you will be a spirit being, right? And that's exactly what happened to me. All I did was I then materialised a, a physical form to demonstrate to people that I was still alive. Yeah. That's the only difference. Yeah. And you are totally capable of doing exactly the same thing, by the way. But I wanted to do that to illustrate to people that there was life after you died. Yeah. Nobody believed that, really. Yeah. Yeah. And what happened to your body then? I dematerialised my body. Yeah. So, so, that, so that people could see that the person that was standing in front of them wasn't still the slab body lying on the slab. Right? If, I dematerial, if I left the body there, then there'd be some confusion. So is that, I dematerial. is that why like, when you materialised your body, is that why you said for no one to touch you? Um, I didn't say for no one to touch me. That's a misconception in the Bible. Um, plenty of people touch me. Thomas uh, even put his hands through, my, his fingers through my wrists. Um, Mary, I gave Mary hugs on a number of occasions, my soulmate. So, no, people certainly touched me. Um, yeah. where, where that, can I say why they have written that in the Bible? They've written that in the Bible to try and make out that I was some now holy creature, something different than all of you. The truth is that I'm not. So, you know, a lot of the things that were written in the Bible about that experience have been written to... Uh, what would you say, to, to, to sort of blow up my importance, if you like, uh, to make me comparable to Buddha and other people who had these legends about them, which were also, by the way, not true. Um, because, it, you know, a lot of times historically what would happen is that there'd be a person coming along generating some enlightenment on the earth and then people would glorify them and make them into a god. They're still doing it. And they're still doing that, right? Yeah. Now, now, that's the opposite of what I wanted. And in fact, you know, my, my, my last prayer to my father was that they become at one with me just as I am at one with God. Like, so I don't want separation. I don't want people to be separate from me and think that I'm something up there. And I'm not, you know. I'm just the same as you. That's all I am. Where would humanity be, though? Like, because humanity loves Jesus and we've followed Jesus and we've Um, I feel in a better condition. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Honest, honestly, um, for 2,000 years I've had to put up with the projections of people thinking that I'm, that, that I'm better than them. And, and that's not the case at all. Did you actually feel that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I certainly feel that. Like it, it's... It, it, well, you know, every single every single year when Christmas was celebrated, I would wouldn't be present, you know, because it's just like the whole the whole um, the whole emotion involved in it of worship of of, of a person uh, thinking that they're better than you are is just just so totally wrong to me and uh, and totally against my feelings inside of myself, and so you know, for me that's a very big issue and. And it's still an issue that I'm struggling with in terms of um, even just saying who I am. Because a, a, lot of, a lot of times, as soon as I say who I am, people then assume that I'm setting myself above them. And it's totally the opposite of what I want to achieve. Um, well, I guess we think of you as, as, according to the story that we've been brought up with, which is what naturally what I did, mm -hmm. what most people would do. I have an idea of who Jesus was. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm very grateful that you just we just had this discussion because it's actually put things into a different perspective for me, which makes me feel much more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Quite honestly, you know. Yeah. See, the way I the way I feel is quite. Um, I've I've had a lot of emotions to process about the glorification of myself, and in fact, that's one of the reasons why I'm working through some very deep unworthiness mm -hmm. issues, is because I just feel that it's so unwarranted. Well, then, of course, we project this story onto you. Yeah. Everyone that you've told now, you're Jesus, we all are instantly projecting our story. Yeah. Because that's what we do. That's yeah. what we can do. Yeah. Until we know. Yeah. Now you've given me another idea of, 
And this has happened to me all my life, uh, even in the spirit world, where I, you know, people would ask for Jesus to come to them. And of course, I'm a spirit, so I can easily come to them. So, so I just go to them, and then they'd say, who are you? And I'd say, well... And and this is a, a problem for me is that one of the reasons why I felt the need to come back in the way that I have too is 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 to, to deconstruct all of these stories. Yeah. Um, and, and to help all of you understand that that what I have done in my own life, you can all do. And it's just a matter of... And, and I haven't done what I've done in my own life because of anything inside of me aside from a desire to connect with God. Right? So it's my burning desire to connect with God and to live in truth. And that's, that's my burning desire. And so that's... You know, all you need to do is have the same desire. You follow me? Yeah. And, and you can achieve exactly the same thing. You can change the world and, and the universe. <laughs> 